Okay, we're going to give you another update here. I'm going to try not to say um and ah. Uh, I'm going to start out by giving you a little quick look here. I changed it from my last video and one word of advice is to try and spell everything out. I built this bed uh, based on an old liner that I had which turned out to probably leak about as uh, much water as I could fill it at and uh, consequently big puddles. And then I also built it at a certain height that I thought would be comfortable and didn't realize my swirl filter would need to be raised. What's that? About uh, three and a half, six, about eight inches up and consequently had to run my overflows through the sides of the barrel and uh, didn't have all the parts and stuff to... Uh, to seal them up and had to go get those parts so just kind of if I spent the time thinking about it rather than doing it, it would have been further ahead anyway here we go we've got uh, this configuration here we're starting um, in my sump uh, eventually this is going to be replaced by a uh, deep water culture bed that I can hopefully use as a sump I've got to try and keep this here because I've got two 100 gallon tanks and I've got this siphon that runs between them and otherwise I run out of water. Uh, my pump draws a vacuum, I don't have a check valve on it, and uh, subsequently I have to prime everything over again. It's going to be a little bit of a pain. I've got goldfish in here now to get it cycled. Uh, I brought the uh, return off the pump in through the top to give me some aeration. I've got a siphon going over into the second IBC. There's been three uh, gold, goldfish that have uh, shot the falls, gone up and through and over. I've got an aerator in there. I think I've got enough aeration coming here with the return and I'm slowly filling it. Currently I have a vase and an old pool. Um, it's not a return, it's the pool suction side uh, filter and I'm hopefully going to get this running so that you can see it in action. Ultimately, I use that unit there. The only problem I have right now, I'm just waiting to put my P-Stone media in here. And we're in business. But I'm, I've got so much water in here, that's why I needed the second tank over here. So the swirl filter seems to be working pretty good. It's looking kind of grungy, but we've got lots of water moving. I put in some uh, media that I had left over from an old uh, cichlid tank. And I bought a couple of furnace filters, and I've got some gutter channel foam for keeping the leaves out of your gutters in there as well. So hopefully I've got lots of surface area for bacteria to get going on, and I'd like to get some uh, moving media to run in there. So here is the bell siphon getting close to going into action. Throw the hole through the bottom. It actually kind of surprised me with uh, how I could get it going. But I don't lose the siphon. It gets to the point where the water is dropped right down. And it's coming in just about as fast as it's going out. And my, my level maintains the same level. So we'll just uh, pause here for a second until we get this moving. And there we go. Get that moving and it's slowly going to draw down on the sides, but I'm going to interrupt it now for a second. Put the regular bell siphon on it. Now we've got the regular bell on there. It started going again, but basically, once we've got the P Stone media in here, it's going to reduce significantly the amount of water. I believe the rule of thumb is that it's going to be approximately 60%. Uh, pea stone and 40% water so if we're cutting back the amount of water that we have to get this running by 60% that's going to help us that we don't need the, the siphon over there between the two tanks and then ultimately this is going to be my grow up tank currently we got goldfish in there we got 40 comets can't beat the price 26 cents a piece but it's going to be grow out tanks for tilapia, which I have on order. And uh, basically, as far as cost for the whole unit, I kept uh, looking on 
Kijiji and found a guy that was looking for tanks. I emailed him and said if we can get a couple together, then great. But as it was, he got two and subsequently decided that he didn't want to do it anymore. So I got both tanks plus a brand new above ground pool pump and this barrel, which he had semi set up for a swirl filter for $100, just a matter of picking them up. And we were in business. I'm gonna show you in a minute, once we get this going, how we do a siphon, just as uh, out of interest. A lot of people may already know how to do that. I've gotten an easy way to do it since I've had to reset it a couple of times. But um, it's uh, definitely very beneficial. At one point, we had so much water coming here, I had to grab every bucket and pail and barrel that I could around the place and try and save my water. So the siphon's slowly coming. You'll see the volume increase as soon as it's drawn all the water out and has a full um, siphon going with the bell siphon. I haven't seen this on any of the YouTube videos or any forums and so I'm going to give you a little suggestion. I've seen guys that with a couple of IBC tanks are running uh, the fittings and a plate through to keep them roughly the uh, same height. And so what I've got here is a lot simpler and um, probably just as reliable. It's, uh, it's a horseshoe siphon. So you can see this thing's fairly heavy and it's full of water. And it's very difficult. Um, I've been a professional firefighter for 23 years and uh, this is something we do when uh, we have a fire out in the country and so we can get and cover this end you can put some plastic over the end or whatever but basically you want to get all the water out and then all I do is take a couple of buckets put them over the end and you keep some water in inside it you just don't want any um, anywhere that's going to come out that it's exposed to the air and then you stand this up you got to be careful that you keep them both more or less even because if you seesaw them back and forth you're going to have the water coming out of one and going into the other and then I just tip it over to the other side tip that over in a full tank pull your siphon out and you're all set you've got all the water out of there a couple of buckets if you run a smaller one you can do something like this it's going to move a fair amount of water and it's just like putting your thumb over the end of a straw. Fill it right up, put your hand over it, bring it across. You see it's full of water there, no air, no air locks. And I've got it going between tanks and I've got it going between my sump tanks here so that I can hold a little bit more water. And uh, at some point when I get the media in the other bed there, we're not going to need as much water. All right, now for the part of the show where you say you've got to be crazy. Didn't really spend too much on the rest of the aquaponics equipment, but as you can see, we've got a lot of wood here for media beds. Uh, fortunately, I had these two 20 by 90 foot uh, double poly greenhouses. And in the other one where I've got the sump tank, I'm hoping to have deep water culture act as more or less a sump and these media beds act as my main filters. I've got, as you can see, a 900 gallon tank that will eventually hold tilapia. This was already existing, came with the greenhouses, and I just had a couple of buddies that knew what they were doing come, and I gave them the idea they had for the media beds, and they built it in about two days. Two and a half days maybe help them a little bit carry wood in and then stayed out of their way as you can see i've got some liners here the pond liner that i have in the small media bed in the other greenhouse is a black pond liner it was 75 cents a square foot from a local pet shop which i thought was pretty good everywhere else i looked was well over a dollar up to a dollar fifty per square foot these i found on kijiji and a local company made them for 50 cents a square foot. So I've got six 
four foot by 40 foot media beds and as you can see these two are separated by the tank 900 gallons hoping to have 400 to maybe 500 tilapia that may be a little aggressive but I remember in Costa Rica seeing oh, 100 tilapia or so in a kids wading pool and they seem to be able to handle the mucky yucky water so I'm gonna eventually have a solid lift overflow come out of this tank probably put some two inch foam insulation underneath this tank and have it lift out overflow into these media beds and run a four inch line across these two sets and I also have by Providence a one horse pool pump that's basically brand new it's operated for maybe all of about three days and it is going to draw out of the deep water culture beds on the other side I'm going to have a one inch line running um, back in two or three maybe four or five places to keep the water circulating in those beds and as well the goldfish tanks are going to have uh, they're going to be grow out tanks for tilapia fry so that is sort of long-term plan these are going to have um, what are we, 160 cubic feet of water in them which is going to require a huge sump tank and I'm going to have tons of pea stone in these. Uh, I think my initial calculation was three or four triaxle loads. And then, of course, the bell siphons at the far end. Maybe a little bit crazy, but I spent most of the winter and I'm a little ambitious um, following guys like Nate Story from Bright Agritech, who's phenomenal. Uh, attended a workshop that we got to speak and question him, speak to him and question him. Um, also, Sylvia Bernstein. I've uh, got some information from Portable Farms and also Friendly Aquaponics is uh, a great uh, resource as well. A little bit different in uh, Hawaii from southwestern Ontario, but a lot of the stuff translates well. So basically if you're doing this, it's a great uh, industry to be part of, great community, and uh, I've learned an awful lot. You can see in the greenhouse today it's about... Um, we're looking at about, gosh, I think it was dropping down to about 12 degrees Celsius outside. There's a little bit of sun, and I think this thermometer is a little bit off, uh, showing that we're almost at 35 degrees Celsius. As well, the uh, relative humidity at 60% seems a little bit high. But uh, it's amazed me that in days that are sunny and the temperature is around freezing, that in here it's gotten over 30 degrees. I don't have the double poly separated as yet. I'm going to have to do that and I'm going to have to come up with some way if anybody has any advice as far as heating this through the winter. I do have a pool heater. I was looking at um, a large aquarium chiller and if I have to, I will get some natural gas shop heaters. I do have an inch and a half low pressure side um, natural gas line back to the greenhouses here that I can tie into. I just don't know if I'm going to overdo it. So that'll be all and I uh, really look forward to any of your comments, suggestions, or uh, just uh, thoughts on any of this as you've seen it. Thanks.